All right, let's learn about Copilot in Excel. I've been spending way too much time playing with the different Copilots from Microsoft 365, and the Excel one was one that really kind of tickled my fancy the most because it lets me do things that I don't know how to do. So I thought what we'd do in this video is kind of explore some of that stuff. So pull it into a table, talk about how to get started, and then like write some formula columns. We'll look at some charts, some of the pivot table stuff that it creates. It's pretty awesome. Some conditional formatting and just try to go through it and give you a real world demo instead of some of those flashy, oh, it just works. We're also going to need to get some data. So we're going to use ChatGPT to create us a fake workbook to work on because let's you know have AI tools help us learn AI tools, right? Like makes sense to me. If that sounds like fun to you, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here on my desktop, this is the one, this is kind of what we'll end up with some form of. This was kind of my practice run. I've done about 20 practice runs, but that was the last one. But thought I'd leave that open so we could kind of see like all the craziness we're about to do. All right, like this one even has things like, you know, pivot charts for some calculations and some visuals. It's pretty cool. We're even going to do a uh, VB script, right? Like who knew? So sounds like fun, right? All right. So the first thing I do to get started is I need an Excel file to play with. Right? I don't do a lot with Excel in my day-to-day -day jobs, or not, especially with data that I could show you. So I thought that I would go get ChatGPT to help me make an Excel file, right? So I have ChatGPT Pro. It can just make an Excel file. So let's say something like, All right, hello, I'm working on a demo for YouTube. Will you please create me a workbook with some data around a marketing campaign, right? So kind of make up one here. And it should include both spend and impact data in the table. The data should be robust enough so I can add pivot tables and charts during my demo. A hundred rows of demo should be sufficient for the date range. Can you randomly use dates between January 1st, 2024 and January 31st? Thanks. Right? So this is one of those things I could teach in my AI class around prompting, right? giving it context so it can make us a better one and telling it exactly how we want it. So if we hit enter, it will start to build this file for us using the analysis engine here. And then we'll be able to download it and kind of do our demo. Now, keep in mind, like whatever scenario you have in mind, just lay it out there. Or if you have, you know, especially something specific around your work, you could even get as detailed as telling it what columns you did and didn't want. But I didn't want to go through all that. Right? I just kind of wanted a broad data set. But it, once again, I needed it robust enough so we could make pivot charts off of it because, well, we need to do that. So there you go. Now we can just download the workbook. OK, now that takes us over to Excel, right? Maybe we'll clean this thing up real quick, do all this number. And if we scroll down the bottom, we can see we have 100 rows, right? The first time I did it, it gave me 500 rows. So that's why I got more specific on the number of rows, um, right? And Copilot works to up to about 2 million rows. So 100, 500 would have been fine. But, you know, the less rows I got, the faster it can crunch the data, the faster my demos go. So when you're just practicing with fake data, we don't want too much fake data. To get started here, we've got to make sure that the file is saved in the right location. It's going to be SharePoint or OneDrive. So if you don't have it saved in one of those locations, then Copilot over here on the right is going to be grayed out. Now mine is green, but Shane, you just opened up your downloads. I did, but I actually have my downloads folder in my OneDrive. So then that way my you know downloads folder go with me across all my machines because I download a lot of stuff I want in multiple places. So anyway, make sure that your data is there. If you're not able to click on this, that's because you haven't saved the file to the right location. Now, if we click here, after a few seconds, Copilot is going to load. Now, what's challenging here is that your data has to be in a table. Okay, but not, not a big deal, but you have to know that. But what confuses me a lot is like if I put my cursor here, you can see that like it gives me one message, right? I only work in an Excel table. Um, you know, what is the date range available? So go make yourself a table. But if I click inside of these rows, then it does, um, you know, it's like, hey, I see that you're probably in a table. We would drive you to make that thing a table. And we do, right? So we're going to say convert. But that was one of those things that confused me a lot earlier with Copilot in Excel is that, you know, my cursor's here, Copilot's working. If I click over here for some reason, I tend to click out of the table when I'm trying to like do other stuff, like it, it goes right back to it doesn't know what uh, what's going on. One other thing I wanted to show you real quick. So if we go over here and say uh, file and new again. So if you don't have ChatGPT Pro, you can't get a file, but you want to sample one. Uh, so if you take this spreadsheet and you just save it into any location, right? So, or any of the supported locations we just talked about. As soon as I save it, now Copilot shows up over here. And so one of the cool things is if it looks at your data and it's like, hey, you've got nothing going on, then it will offer to give you an, ex an example table. So we say try an example, it will throw an example table. So now with that particular example table, I can't massage it to be what I want. And unfortunately, Excel Copilot doesn't have that same ability as ChatGP does to make a table in the fashion that we wanted. But if you just needed a fake table, this would be another way to get there, okay? So let's get out of there. I don't care about this. All right, and let's go ahead and let's make our little copilot a little bit bigger as well. You know, so if you click right here, you can kind of pull it over. 
So just gives you more space to type, especially if you got a lot going on, right? And so make sure we're clicking the right place. I keep clicking out of there because it's just natural for me and it confuses me. And so now you can jump in and start to use Copilot in Excel. Now up here, they've got some good examples. So these are things that'll help you if you don't know where to start. Um, also down here, we've got this whole view prompts library. So right now you've got me as a guide, but when you want to start exploring with yourself later, you know, definitely click on something, see what happens or go clicking through the prompts and they're kind of bucketed out that way. All right, so looking at the data, the first thing I want to do is I want to add a column for cost per click. So let's just say something like, please add me a column for cost per click and hit enter. So if you think about it, this is pretty cool, right? It's looking at my data and basically it's figuring out, okay, well, it has a click column, all right? We got a spin column. And so it's kind of figuring that out on its own. It's like, oh, you know, cost per click is spin divided by clicks. So it is not just looking at your columns and stuff. Like it understands, right? We didn't say anything about spend, right? We said cost, but it was able to understand that. It's where the large language models come into play and understanding more than just the literal words on the screen. But that looks like the right formula. So now if we just hover over that, you can see if we hover, it shows me what it would do. And then if we say insert column, boom, we've got that in there. All right, so that is done. So what if we try to say, okay, well now I wanna do one on cost for conversion and cost for impressions, right? Like I love that, that was pretty cool. So what if we try to ask it to do multiple columns? Please add a column for cost per impression and cost per conversion. So we'll hit enter there. And after a few seconds, it tells you, hey, I can only do one at a time, okay? So once again, you know, as you're playing, try to stretch the boundaries. Like it didn't hurt me that I said, hey, try to do two columns at once, right? Worse it is, it said I can't do that. It even said, sorry. So. This is one of the keys to learning AI, right? Is we've got to learn to speak its love language. You've got to learn to kind of get this back and forth. One of the best ways to do that is just to try things, right? No one knows, well, yes, you all know, I just tried to do a silly thing and add two columns at once, but, but in reality, when you're sitting at your desk, no one knows what you're trying. The AI is not going to make fun of you. It's okay, ask it for things. The worst it's going to say is, sorry, I can't do that. And if one of your goals is to get better at working with AI, whether it's ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, or more specifically Microsoft Copilot and all the different ones of those, there's 150 of those plus last time I checked, then go check out my new class over at training.powerapps91.com. I have a mastering AI class and in there I teach you the fundamentals of prompting. I teach you about how to co-author with AI. Then we get into deep dives into ChatGPT and Bing Chat and then all the different co-pilots and then we also have a bunch of real world scenarios. So if being better at AI is one of your goals, you can do that. Also with that, you're going to get the ability to join our live monthly office hours. Where we're going to just chat what's going on in the AI world and answer your AI questions. It's a really great way, you know, to invest in yourself and to start learning. So go check that out and let's jump back to the video. So speaking of things that it hasn't done for me yet, let's try having it rename the cost per click column to CPC, right? So we'll just type that in the prompt. We'll hit enter. It says it did it, but if you look, it did not do it. It was unsuccessful. Um, and the reason if you look here, I tried to do it for I2 to I101, it didn't look in I1. So this is one of those things where like it thinks it did it, but it didn't. The first time I tried this, it ended up like formatting that column really weird because it was trying to make it a text column and there were a bunch of numbers. So if something bad goes wrong here, or in this case, like you just don't feel good because it didn't do anything and you know, just hit undo. Undo will wipe things away. Oh, and in this case, undo removed my whole column. That is not cool. All right, well, that is the first time that has happened to me. All right, that's all right. We'll just have it put that back for us. All right, we'll just go back up here and we can say, hey, let's please add that column again. So we'll just do that, copy, paste it back down here. And this time we'll say, no, that's really the first time that's happened to me where it's, you know, I said undo and it wiped away the whole column. Um, so hopefully, and there is no redo the undo. Um, so there you go, that was a little bit of a bug I was not expecting, but that's all right. We just can have it put it back in there. So there you go, it's back again. We'll say insert the column and it's like it never happened. But this time we even told it to make it CPC. So we got what we want. And of course, if you look at the column, I also want to point out one of the things I really love here is it does things the right way, right? So if you see this, it says equal spend divided by clicks. It So it's not just hard coding the numbers, which is, you know, like if we had ChatGPT, if I was over there making things, it would, not, it would do that for me. I, and I don't want that. I want something like this. So we can also do things like let's have it format a column. So let's say, let's take revenue and turn that into a currency. Please make the revenue column display as currency. We'll hit enter. And so as you can probably guess, it's going to then take and apply a currency format. Now you're probably thinking, Shane, I could just have clicked the button up there. Like, look, I literally just highlighted the column and clicked here and done it just as fast myself. Totally agree. The key for me though, is that this is, you know, you're at the stage where you're trying to learn what it can and can't do, and you're trying to learn its love language. You're trying to get better at talking to it. So asking it to do things that you already know how to do 
is a great way to learn. This is the same way I learned PowerShell, learned Power Apps, way I learned APIs. I would try to do something I already knew how to do manually in an automated fashion so I could see what that would look like and I could validate very easily, did it do what I wanted, right? Like we got our formatting. So yeah, you know, like if I wanted to do spin, you know, you guys know, right? Like you could want here, click this, and that would have been much faster than typing away on Copilot, but I wouldn't have gained that Copilot muscle. Okay, so don't be afraid to do things you already know how to do. Same type of thing, like I could say, please sort the table by revenue, most to least, right? If we hit enter, it's just gonna go and do a sort on the revenue column for us, but it gave me another chance to see how it did things. And boom, in a total shocker, it sorted the revenue from highest to lowest for you, right? So, and it did it the right way, right? It used the actual drop down here the way it should in a sorting situation. All right, so next I wanna to try to see if it can understand my data. So this was one that I asked earlier, I'll be curious how it answers it, but I can see that they put a ROI, right? So there was an ROI column here. Now when ChatGPT did it, it just put a number in here, but I would like to understand how that got calculated. So let's ask it, there's an ROI column based on the data. Do you know how it came up with that column? Right, let's just see what happens. All right, so it didn't figure it out this time, right? And I'll post a little picture up there to show you kind of what it gave me the last time I asked this, I told you. This is one of the hardest things I think is when you teach these AI tools that don't just give stock answers, like one time it was able to figure it out, the next time it wasn't, no big deal. Um, so let's try here. How is ROI typically calculated based on the columns of this table? Let's see if that can get us an information. So there you go, that's what I was looking for, right? ROI isn't needed in this table, you've already got it, but however, the typical formula for that would be revenue minus spend divided by spend. Ah, and I double checked it earlier and that is definitely the way that ChatGPT did it. So keep that in mind as well. It doesn't necessarily have to just be about do something for me. In this case, it's helping me understand my data. And it can do a lot more in helping me understand my data. So what if we try something like, what is the percentage of spend based on campaign, right? So this is kind of an analytical question. And if you are an Excel superstar, unlike me, right? You're thinking, oh, well, you know, we could do a pivot chart. We could work and do all that. Shane has never successfully built his own pivot chart. Just gonna be honest. But the beauty of Copilot is it turns out it's pretty smart at this and it's pretty smart at building these type of things for us. So look at that. It says, hey, this is what you would want to see there, right? Like it's showing me a pivot chart for this. It's kind of broken out. And so if I like what it's done here, it's gonna finish generating the content just a second, there you go. So it's answering the question with words as well, but I can now say add to a new sheet. And now look at this over here, it has made a pivot chart for me. And then it has given me the visual around that. So I could come in here, right? This is just a normal pivot chart. So if I wanna you know, drill down to just customer loyalty, you know, now we can kind of do this. And now it's you know been redone, right? Because customer loyalty is 100%. I guess I need to probably two to make this make more sense. We'll add product to launch as well. But you get the idea. I told you I'm not very good at pivot charts, but there you go. So you can see now how their spend uh, kind of breaks out. So this super duper powerful, right? Like it built this for me and I can start to, like once I accept that it can build pivot charts, I can prescriptively guide it into what I'm looking for. Now keep in mind that like when I'm over here, if I click in here and I try to use, like you can't use Copilot against either of these. It doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't understand pivot charts yet. Like, so you can say, you know, something like, oh, wait a second, let me click in there. But uh, like one of the times I tried to get it to help me with the pivot chart and it basically told me like, I, I'm not, I don't do pivot charts yet. I liked the yet. I feel like uh, being able to use Copilot to manipulate the pivot chart, once again, helping people like me that don't know a lot, is one of the things that they're probably working on, but as of today, you can't do that. Okay, so going back over here, so speaking of things I don't know how to do, like, so maybe I'll go over here and let's try, apply one of those fancy red, yellow, green color scales to the revenue column, please. Once again, I've seen people do this in Excel. I don't really know how they do that in Excel because people were better than me, but we're gonna let it run. Oh, and so now it's done. Now, because we sorted by revenue, it doesn't look as pretty, so let's go back over here and sort by date again. I could ask it to sort, but we're just gonna go it this way oldest and newest. So there you go. So now we've got that red and green funness there. Now, once again, the thing I love is this is a conditional formatting. So it did it the right way. So if you go to conditional formatting and say manage rules, you can see the rules that it applied. So that is nice, right? It didn't just jankily do it. And if we change things, it will accept it because it's, it's a formula based way to do this conditional formatting. It's not a one-off deal, right? So I think Microsoft should get a lot of credit for that. It's everything that Copilot does in Excel 
it does it the right way instead of some made up way or some temporary one off way. Same type of thing, we might do something like, please make the ROI font color red when the value is negative, right? We'll hit enter and look at that. So now all the negative ones are red. And if we go to this one and edit it and we throw a negative symbol in front, right? We change this one manually, to, it just instantly comes red because it was done the correct way. Okay, so very, very, very powerful. Now, as you're looking at different things it can do, like come over here and play with your suggested options, right? And so like show items with spend of this, like what does that do? I don't know, let's click on it. Okay, so instead I'm having trouble. So I've ran into this a couple of times. Typically when it gets into this, I'm having trouble mode. Usually if you close Copilot and then open it back up, that will usually kind of reset Copilot, kind of you know, wake it up. Keep in mind that it does have, um, a history, right? So it still has all the things we've previously done. And then if we paste this in again, let's try. Oh, and so that just really just did a filter, right? If we looked over here, it just filtered off of that one value and we can just clear the filter out, go back to what we were doing. So <laughs> before it even got done, we finished it. But clicking those things, right? Like just see what it does. That's how you figure it out. It's okay. It's, it's not gonna break anything. And we're using sample data here to get started. So we don't have to worry about that. And so speaking of things we don't have to worry about, how about if you ever wanted to add VB script into your Excel, right? Like some of you know how to do that, some of you don't. I'm probably in the category of people that I can write VB script, but I don't know how to do it in Excel. But what if we do something like this? Please create me a button to send an email using VBA. Like I wouldn't even know where to start on that particular question, but we're gonna ask and look at that. So it says, hey, here's, here's the code, right? And then it says you can add this a module in your VB editor. When you click the button, it will send. And so then I bet I could ask it, how do I add a button in Excel? And look at that. There's the instructions on how to add a button. What, what? I know, I know. So there is so much that it can do here. You know, we've just got to play. I've also seen uh, people talk about doing like what if analysis with it. Um, I think one of the times, one of my practice runs, I said, hey, if I got an extra $10,000 to spend, what would be the best way to get more clicks? And it was able to analyze my data and it told me what campaign to add the $10,000 to. It was, it was pretty intuitive. So there's a lot of really interesting stuff that it can do. Microsoft is working on this hot and heavy. So I'm guessing, you know, a month from now, three months from now, six months from now, all of those milestones will have a lot more stuff, a lot more capability. And if you remember, if you're sitting there thinking, Shane, I know how to do all these things already. Great. Remember, this is about practicing, uh, talking to Copilot as much as it is about getting the output because we've got to start building those skills up. So when it can do the super cool, complicated, hard stuff, We've already got our practice time and we're already comfortable talking to it to get it to do our things. And then we'll be able to slide into those more advanced scenarios. Right now they're doing beginner scenarios. That's okay. We want to be able to grow with that. And remember, if you want help growing, go check out my class, right? Like I spent months making that class and it's all the wonderful content. And we got a bunch of co-pilot stuff, a bunch of prompting technique stuff. And of course that class also has a live component. So once a month we get together live to talk about AI and we're adding new content to it, right? There's all this stuff planned to continue to grow that class because AI is evolving very fast. So that class has got to evolve. All right. And so with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.